This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Three, two, one, fight! What's up guys, Leon here. Welcome back to my channel. Guys, I fall in love with EMPs and EMP generators. In the last few years, I've showed you all kinds of how to build an EMP generator. But there are still some other methods which we haven't tested yet. And I don't mean EMPs generated by an atomic bomb or a flux compression generator. This is not possible for us. There's another method, the wire exploding method. After digging through some patents, which were very interesting by the way, I came across the wire explosion method. The principle is super simple. Let me explain it quickly. A rectified high voltage source charges a high voltage capacitor. The charged capacitor is discharged by a switch across a wire. Yeah, and that's it. Optimally, the capacitor is charged to a voltage of about 50 kV. The capacity is about 0.5 microfarad. At a voltage of 50 kV, we no longer need a switch. Since the air around us has a breakdown voltage of about 1 mm per 1 kV, a spark gap is sufficient instead of a switch. The spark gap will be triggered by itself as soon as the capacitor is fully charged. Of course, the capacitor should also be pulse resistant and have a maximum self inductance of around about 50 nanohenry. To generate a strong EMP, it is important that the capacitor is discharged as fast as possible. Since the wire should be vaporized by the high energy flow, it should not be too thick. I think 0.2 mm is optimal. To complete the whole setup, we mount a parabolic mirror behind the wire. Now we know how to build such a generator, but how does it work? Before we answer this question, I will introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, JLCPCB. If you need a PCB for your project, JLCPCB is truly the best solution. You can not only order your own PCBs for an unbeatable price, you can also get your 3D models printed in all possible variations. To measure the EMP later with an oscilloscope, I made this PCB. We can also use this PCB for a Tesla coil. Now we just have to upload the Gerber file to JLC. We have many possibilities here to improve our PCB. I decided to use a classic PCB green. Once the PCBs are ordered, it doesn't take long for them to arrive. The quality is really impressive. The gaps between the tracks are super small, but still everything is very clean. Back to the functionality of the EMP generator. The whole setup has a certain inductance. We call it the leakage inductance. It consists of the inductance of the cables and the capacitor inductance. If the capacitor now discharged, when the maximum charging voltage is reached, a current flows through the entire circuit. This happens very quickly due to the high voltage. If the current now flows through the thin wire, the following happens. The current is so high that the wire just vaporizes due to the high energy. So the circuit is now interrupted again, no more current flows. This interruption of the current flow happens extremely quickly. The collapsing field of the leakage inductance creates a massive electromagnetic wave which is bundled by means of the parabolic mirror. So much for the theory. In practice the military is able to bring cars to health from a great distance, for example from a helicopter using such a generator. However, I think there are better alternatives, like bundled microwaves and other crazy stuff. Because I find the concept of wire explosion so interesting, I just <laughs> built an EMP generator like that. Actually, I really want to use a capacitor with 50 kV and 0.5 microfarad, but they are way too expensive. Unfortunately, I don't have any comparable capacitors either, so I called my friend Live the call warning machine man. He lent me this capacitor, 1.8 kV, 50 microfarad. You can kill an elephant with that, so that's definitely not a toy. Yes, I know, the voltage is not even close to that what it should be, but I think it's enough to demonstrate the principle. Before we test the monster right away, I want to show you the setup in a bit more detailed. The wire is clamped between these two screws. We will test aluminum wire, magnesium, iron, copper, solder and silver. The parabolic mirror comes from an old spotlight. Since the spark gap is not the best solution for a voltage of 1.8 kV, I built this mechanical circuit breaker. It is tensioned by strings and can be triggered with a rope. 
for safety reasons very important, resistors are attached to the capacitor which permanently discharge the capacitor slowly. The inductance is not necessary in our case, but it looks cool. We charge the capacitor with this construction. A MOT, a microwave oven transformer, which is rectified by two high voltage diodes. The small electrolytic capacitors you see here are a voltage divider. If there is a voltage of 180 volts on one capacitor, it means that the high voltage capacitor is charged to 1.8 kV. On this cable we can measure the voltage for example with a multimeter. The microwave oven transformer is connected to an isolation transformer. This provides a maximum power of 200 watts. It just gives me a better feeling. The isolation transformer is supplied by a variable transformer, a variac. With this we can slowly increase the voltage. Enough Siri guys, you are now at the very first test. I must say, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. Three, two, one, fire! The EMP generator works as far as it should, but does it generate an EMP? To test this, I will now place my old mobile phone in front of the parabolic mirror. Hmm, unfortunately the mobile phone still works, shit. The voltage at the capacitor is probably just too low. But I think we can still detect an EMP. For this, I connect the PCB from JLC PCB to an oscilloscope probe. We should now be able to see the EMP as a peak. A pulse can be measured in any case. It could be stronger, but maybe it's better the way it is now. One more thing I want to show you. Each metal explodes in a different color. Look at these beautiful plasma clouds. They look a bit like a mini supernova. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, even though we didn't create a megawatt EMP that would paralyze an entire city. It's all about the principle, guys. Don't forget it. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed it today. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. And then, guys, we'll see you in the next video.